I'm Joseph from Makina Designs and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please stick around. Hopefully I can earn your subscription. In this particular video, we're gonna focus on the rotary tools that I have in my Dremel arsenal. There are six tools to choose from. So I will put timestamps in the video. So please just skip straight ahead if there's a particular tool that you're interested in. However, this should give you enough information to make an informed decision on what tool is best for you, depending on whether you're just starting out in engraving or looking for something to start off in the arts and crafts industry or looking for a go-to rotary tool for your workshop. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So the Dremel Stylo. Now this is a cool little tool. If you haven't seen one of these before, now you have. A really nice little tool to get started with. I got my hands on this a couple of years ago at the Mecca Central show here in the UK. Um, and I'm very, very impressed with the overall design and um, with the whole overall tool itself. Um, really, really cool little starter tool here. Um, this is mainly designed for softer materials such as leather, ceramics, glass. I know ceramics and glass are are quite hard in their sense but in terms of the stress that it creates on the motor is a lot less than what it does with metals and things like that this is still capable of engraving metal um, but you will find that it does stress out the the motor a little bit um, it doesn't have the same amount of torque that the other larger tools in its category have um, so again this is very very good to start on soft materials um, very very light overall tool very comfortable in the hand. As you can see, it just feels and looks like a large Sharpie. And it has five different settings, speed settings from one all the way up to five, a maximum RPM of 22,000 RPM. For a little tool like that is, is pretty impressive. Another great little feature is the multi-chuck. Now this allows you to have a variety of different size shaft um, burrs, which um, allows you to go and shop for aftermarket burrs from different manufacturers and not particularly, you don't have to be uh, go to Dremel for the burrs. Um, the older style clamping system they had on the uh, Dremels um, is obviously now being outphased with the, the multi-chuck. It's way more secure, way more simpler to use, um, much better in my overall opinion. The only downside to this particular tool that I've found so far is that at the highest speed setting, it does tend to vibrate around the casing on the, the back end here. Um, granted, you won't probably be using the high speed settings on glass and ceramics. You'd probably sit around the, you know, your, the third there. So, I mean, we'll turn that on. It is very, very quiet for what it is. Very, very quiet. But as soon as you go into setting number five, four, let go, you can obviously hear the vibration is pretty loud. So as you can see, there's some form of um, design criteria that they need to have a look at um, the design and overall fixing of that that casing there it just doesn't seem to be fixed um, firmly enough for it to stop that um, uh, quite annoying vibration um, that's the only downside that I have found with this tool overall it still functions perfectly well um, and it's a great starter tool another great thing about a tool like this any rotary tool if they have a cable some of them tend to be quite restrictive because they they quite um, fat and quite thick um, and you do tend to find yourself fighting the cable a little bit uh, where in this case it is you know you've got a really unrestrictive cable about two meters just under two meters in length um, and you don't find yourself fighting the cable at all you don't even realize it's there which is pretty good so in my overall opinion it's a really great little starter tool here the Dremel Stylo relatively inexpensive I think you could pick these up for about 40 pounds here in the UK so have a look at these um, and see what you guys think. The Dremel 7760. So I, I did a funny video quite some time ago when this first came out. Um, and yeah, I, I took a bit of flack for that. People didn't really like the video. Um, I think people were more interested in what the tool was all about. And I kind of, yeah, I was joking around. Um, but yeah, I had fun making the video. But I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll put that to bed and um, have a look at what this tool is all about in this video. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. Um, 
yeah, anyway, it was a lot of fun to make. But um, the 7760, um, it's battery op um, operated, so it is very similar to, well, it takes a lot of the style and design from the 4300. Um, and this is like the, s the smaller brother to the 8220. So that is a, like a similar design as the Dremel 4000, but just battery operated. Um, so this is quite small and it's a quite a nice little go-to tool um, in the workshops. So if you want to quickly grab something and grind or cut or drill something, this is a really, really handy little tool to have in the workshop to do, do just that. So it, it goes up to 25,000 RPM. Hopefully you guys can see that, there you go. I'm going to sharpen out the way. Um, very simple to operate. You've got five different, four different settings. You've got your shaft lock where you can change your, 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 um, your burrs out. The one thing I will suggest in changing is the, the these shaft lock here. So this is the old style. These tend to wear out after some time. So get that changed over for a multi-chuck like they have on the Dremel Stylo. Um, it's a large um, size difference, but these are so much simpler to use um, and it gives you that variety of you know, using different shaft um, thicknesses. So have a look at that. Um, again, very, very quiet. Um, so we'll, we'll just have a look at that. You can barely hear that. and hardly any vibration. Hardly any vibration through any of the speed settings, which is really nice. Um, compared to the Dremel Stylo, it's very, very small, but I think with the casing and stuff, there's obviously something that Dremel needs to look at in terms of the vibration that comes out of this little machine. Um, but even on the highest setting, this is, you know, it's super quiet um, and it's very, very comfortable in your hand as well. Um, it's a little bit more weight compared to the Dremel Stylo. For obvious reasons, a lot of the weight is um, carried in the battery area to keep this little bad boy going for a few hours. Um, and I did do a video of engraving a portrait with this tool um, to really test its limits. Um, and we got through most of the portrait, but I had to charge this a couple of times just to get it through the project. So it didn't do too bad of a job, but I'd probably recommend this as a go-to tool around the workshop for, you know, you know, cutting jobs, uh, a quick drill or anything like that. So it is really, really um, handy little tool to have around the workshop. So the Dremel 4000, I've owned this Dremel this particular one for about 10 years now and it's still going strong. Granted I've changed the brushes on the motor to keep her going. Um, she's done a superbly good job on all the, the, the jobs and work I've thrown at her. She's done countless and thousands and thousands of hours worth of work um, and done an amazing job at that. So um, very very impressed with the overall quality and it, it the design and the functionality of these tools, hence why I've got so many Dremel tools in my arsenal. Um, what you'll find is a lot with the Dremel tools is the, the same sort of style that goes through each of the tools, which is the, the color coding of all the, the buttons. So they're quite easy to identify, especially the, the shaft lock, the on and off, and the speed settings. These, go, these larger rotary tools go up to 35,000 RPM. Um, so they mean business. Uh, when it comes to engraving and doing some jobs around the workshop. Now these larger rotary tools have a multitude of different attachments for woodwork, metalwork, you name it. You can throw loads of little different types of jobs at these tools which is very very handy. What makes it even uh, more versatile is the flex shaft attachment that I have here. It turns this large rotary tool into something a little bit more manageable um, if you want to do fine detail on particular jobs from engraving, um, some wood carving. Um, this is a very, very uh, recommended attachment to get for your rotary tool. You generally do get the flex shafts in a package with the, the Dremel tools. Um, but make sure that you get yourself the multi-chuck. That will save you a lot of time. And it's way more useful than, than the old style. Uh, clamping system they have on the older tools as you can see there on the 7760 that's the older style you want to change that out to the multi-chuck 
So we'll have a look at that 4300 and we'll compare the two and have a look at the differences. But overall, really good little tool. It's cabled. You can get a battery operated one, which is the 8220. Um, again, um, you are basically um, stopped by the battery. So whereas this, you've got constant power and you can run this little motor all day long. Um, and she, you know, they, they do a fantastic job at that. Introducing the Dremel 4300. As you can see, there's quite a few differences, especially in appearance and design. Uh, there's a lot more differences. You, for, let's start off with the, the air vents. So you've got your intake, you've got your exhaust, um, loads more sort of opening area for your, uh, your cooling effect on your motor, both sides. So the Dremel 4000 still had a decent amount of airflow, and if you be intake, but your exhaust was slightly restricted. So I did find that the Dremel 4000 did get um, quite hot compared to the 4300. Um, so that's a nice little update, and you can see the, the design change on the top. So a really good thing, in my opinion, um, if you are engraving or doing a lot of work with these tools, um, and I mean hundreds of hours you know, per week or um, per month, is the maintenance of these tools. So one thing they did focus on is sorting out the brushes. So the brushes tend to wear out, as you can imagine, on a rotary tool and to get the brushes out of the 4000 you've got to basically split the case um, and it is slightly tricky to get everything back together and working 100% so um, what they did was make it a super simple way on the 4300 basically you just unscrew the, the cap and it reveals the, the, the brush for the motor and that can be changed out relatively simple um, and you can just reintroduce the cap and away you go. So I thought that was a really nice update um, to the 4300, along with a more powerful, more torquier motor, so you can get a lot more um, uh, use out of this, this motor. I'm not saying that the Dremel 4000 is bad in any way, um, it's still super capable of most jobs you throw at it. But the 4300 has a little bit more torque, especially when you're adding a lot of pressure to metals, the, the motor tends to react to that. Um, intelligently and start picking up and ramping up the torque um, in, their, in their obviously their respective RPM ranges. Again this goes up to 35,000 RPM matching the Dremel 4000 and the overall sort of uh, change to everything is, is pretty pretty nice. As you can see there's, there's a large on off button compared to the old style um, and they've carried that style through to the 7760 as you can see they're very very similar to the 4300. Um, so yeah, again, this is um, usable with the variety of attachments that Dremel have. I mean, it's an absolute gold mine uh, with the attachments that they offer, um, not only from the accessories, such as all the burrs and cutting burrs and sanding discs, you name it. There are thousands of different burrs and attachments you can get for these Dremel, so they are super versatile. Um, not only for engraving but you can use it for a multitude of different tasks around the house so um, so I mean these tend to retail a bit um, on the higher side I think about here in the UK you can pick them up for about a hundred pound sometimes a lot less about 80 pound depending where you, you shop around you do tend to get a nice starter kit um, with these Dremels such as the flex shaft um, you do get some form of rotary to um, routing tool and a little starter kit such as this one I have here which has a multitude of little cutting burrs, sanding burrs, just to get you started off on your, 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 your journey, which is very, very nice from Dremel. Um, again, it's got a nice hook you can attach and you can hook onto um, somewhere high up in, the, in your workshop and then you can make use of a um, flex shaft if you so wish. Now here's a tool that you don't see every day, uh, but if you do search for Dremel engraver or engraving tool, these tend to pop up and um, they are very unorthodox compared to the rotary tools. These have more of an impact style, um, so they do have their place in engraving um, and they're quite um, detailed in terms of if you want to do any handwriting or things like that, it's quite simple to use that um, with these Dremel engravers. They all have their place. Whereas a rotary tool, if you're trying to do some handwriting, it's slightly trickier. But with a Dremel engraver, um, it's way more uh, forgiving. The, um, the only thing I will say, it is a very different sound, as obviously it's an impact type tool, as you, I'll demonstrate now. So there's 10 different settings to that.
as you can imagine, it's not the most pleasant sound, I will admit, compared to a rotary tool, um, such as the Dremel Stylo, which is a way more quiet, uh, what we showed earlier. And like I mentioned before, they all have their own um, places within engraving. So I'll just demonstrate the, the type of texture this leaves behind. So this is something my, my kids are playing around with. So listen to that, it is obviously quite loud. Um, highly recommend some earplugs or get some headphones. Uh, but again, this is it has its own place for textures and different things, as you can imagine. Uh, it's more of an impact tile, uh, type tool, whereas your rotary tools, they tend to just basically, they cut through the surface, whereas this impacts, it leaves more of a, um, a rut, shall we say, or cuts into the material, so a lot deeper um, grooves so again really nice for textures so if you want to um, change up the textures um, and switch between different Dremels then this is something definitely worth thinking about because you can change these tips and you can have different styles and you can basically create your own tips and you can use this to um, basically dig out a lot of material so that's another little uh, secret tip there um, but yeah something worth think about not your conventional rotary tool um, but something definitely have a look at and uh, um, mainly I think design for uh, simple handwriting it is very forgiving when you're doing handwriting and it's, it's it gives you a lot of freedom whereas a rotary tool um, you are restricted by the burr spinning in a particular direction and if you try and counter that or come back with that it d tends to fight so it is more of an art to learn how to use um, do handwriting with a rotary tool compared to the Dremel engraver, which is a lot more forgiving. Wow, introducing the 40 flex. Now this, this guy, I must admit, means business. When it comes to engraving or doing working with metals, uh, this is a pretty decent tool, as you can see. It's, um, it's more industrial than anything else. Uh, it's mainly designed for large, jobs um, really really tough jobs and that obviously take a lot of um, abuse so this is basically designed for that particular job in mind um, it does come with two different types of hand pieces so this is the standard hand piece that comes with the actual uh, the 40 flex it says quite a large chuck there I think it takes up to six mil burrs again very industrial sizes these are quick release um, hand pieces and I'll demonstrate that in a second this is quite large obviously as you can imagine but really great for guys who work with motors and um, do a lot of metal work not to say there's a lot of people out there actually use this on woodwork as well and carving um, various different types of materials so it's very uh, very nice and versatile again quite versatile but you've got that power to back you as well which is quite cool uh, this is the more slimline version of the the handpiece this is way more forgiving on the hand if you're doing a little bit more finite detail and again these are quick release and quite simple to change out so um, which is quite nice if you've got um, if you work in a particular uh, project and you want two different style burrs you don't have to spend all that time changing out you know the burrs you can use this for removing a lot of more of the material and um, keep something more um, designed for detail in this one and you can just quickly change that out on the fly which is quite cool um, now this machine or the motor operate it's a 300 watt motor so basically double the power of your Dremel 4000s your Dremel 4300s um, and operates up to 22,000 rpm this is foot pedal operated um, and controlled that way. So you have really finite control over um, the tool and um, the, the speed of your burr, which is really cool. Um, so you can really dial in those settings and work on polishing or carving or you know different styles of things you're using. So you know just a very basic on and off switch. You get a nice sort of heavy duty uh, hook there that you can um, hang this up. Um, Again, the, the flex shaft in this is very, very industrial. Um, it's quite large, um, but very flexible and forgiving at the same time. So there's your quick release attachment there. Um, and what you do get with the 40 flex, um, they have that in mind is 
your tools for undoing your, your chucks. Larger spanner, uh, a hook, it's designed for a wall, and then you've got a pair of um, brushes there for your motor, which is quite nice. You don't really get that with the, the smaller the models, such as the 4300 or the 4000. You don't get any uh, the brushes, um, which I think they should they should um, add that into their their packs. Is the uh, you know a set of brushes, so at least you know what they look like, um, and at least have like a part number in there. So if you want to order these again from Dremel, you know make it quite simple for yourself. Um, it tends to be a bit of a hunting experience, um, especially looking for brushes for the smaller motors but this is I mean this is the, the big bad boy of, of the, the, the Dremel family um, I'm not too sure if they're still available here in the UK I do believe some of them were discontinued um, which is a shame because this is a fantastic tool um, and I'm glad I, I've got my hands on uh, the 40 flex and I've kept hold of this um, because I'm definitely going to be using this way more uh, moving into my metal fabrication so there's a lot more stuff that um, I'll be using this for but you know, I'll demonstrate um, getting this thing hooked up and uh, just how loud this thing is and the uh, pedal operation. The Dremel 40 Flex with the hand pieces being quick release what you'll find is on the chuck you've got a little key set in there just to rotate that chuck so now that's me controlling the, the, the foot pedal. You can see you've got really finite control in that speed there. So if you really need to go slowly on something or really turn up the speed, you can do so with a foot pedal, which is quite nice. Um, so the hand pieces, again, quick release. It's got like a key setting there. So when you have a look, make sure that recesses into that slot, and then you can basically just clip it in there. Um, this is the larger hand piece, which is um, um, loosened with a chuck tool, which comes with the, the actual uh, 40 flex itself. So this is what you get in the package. It goes up to six mil burrs. Again, designed for those heavy duty jobs. And then just changing this over to your smaller hand piece. Uh, it's slightly easier to use for high detailed areas. Again, make sure that's seated. A good tip to obviously um, bear in mind is make sure all the metal to metal contact areas um, and these clips are all well oiled and just keeps that whole change of a process pretty slick and smooth so you'll notice obviously the hole in this particular hand piece that comes with that um, stopper there so it just helps you to change over your burrs so it's a little bit of a, a knack to get used to this so once you get used to it it's not too bad so when it recesses in there you just hold that in place and then you can spin that off and that basically locks the shaft um, on the actual handpiece there. So hopefully the information in this video has helped you make a decision on what tool is good for you and where you'd like to start out with. Bear in mind the price ranging starts from anything from 15 to 20 pounds all the way up to 200 pounds. So there's a price range that is dedicated to most sort of um, uh, budgets there uh, which is quite nice if you're looking for a recommendation of what tool you'd like to start out with I'd highly recommend the 4300 it's super versatile straight out of the box um, and it is my go-to tool um, again it's just used for a multitude of tasks um, from cutting grinding um, engraving you name it whatever I throw at, at that tool it basically does the job for me so um, however if you'd like to see any other tools from the Dremel arsenal in particular I'm the UK's Dremel engraving ambassador so if there's any other tools that you'd like to be showcased on the on the channel please let me know down below and again if there's any comments or suggestions um, on with any of the tools that you've seen today or any further questions you'd like to do, um, ask please let me know down below and I'll do my utmost best to uh, guide you and help you in any way I can in, in terms of engraving or um, recommendations on tools and any further questions you might have. Um, but without further ado, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I've earned your subscription and we will definitely see you in the next one.